Welcome to Ascending DC channel. We are an AWS certified partner to provide cloud consulting and technical support to clients who are looking for cloud solutions to tackle the challenge in their day-to-day -day operations. This video is one of the many short videos we are producing. In each of them, we are going to demo and explain when used for AWS practice that can be used to improve the efficiency and accuracy of your work. All these tricks have been proved effective in our client's success. If you are a project manager, DevOps, architect, software engineer, or just looking for useful cloud practice, this video is made for you. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sean the software engineer in Ascending LLC. Today we are going to um, talk about various ways of registering users in AWS Cognito User Pool. Well, Amazon Cognito provides authentication, authorization, and user management for your app and mobile apps. The two main components of Amazon Cognito are user pools and uh, identity pools. User posts are user directories that provide sign up and sign in options for your app users. Identity posts enable you to grant your users access to other AWS services. You can use identity pool to, you can use identity posts and user posts separately or together. This is a diagram that illustrates the confirmation process. A user account can be in any of the following states. Registered in this stage, the user has successfully signed up, but cannot sign in until the user account is confirmed. Well, the new user who signed themselves up starts in this state. Next, confirmed. In this stage, the user account is confirmed and the user can sign in. This is a normal, pro this is a normal stage for all the users. The password reset required. The user account is confirmed, but the user must request a code and reset his or her password before he or she can sign in. Full string password state means the user account is confirmed and the user can sign in using a temporary password. But on first signing, the user must change his or her password to a new value before doing anything else. Disable stage, well, in this stage, the user cannot log in. Also, before a user account can be deleted, it must be disabled first. Okay, now let's create a user pool in the AWS console together. Well, we are gonna um, give, give this a pool name and uh, review defaults. We can, in here, we can uh, see all the conf configurations for the Cognito. Well, we will keep all of them in the default value and uh, create the pool. Well, now let's go to the domains and uh, assign a domain name here. Let's say test ascending Cognito. Mm, let's change to, well, okay, this domain is available. Let's save change. And then go to the app clients to create an app clients. Test the app and keep all the configuration to the default and create the app client. Okay, now we got an app client ID. Next, we are going to the app client setting. And here we should provide a callback URL. A callback URL indicates where the user is going to be redirected after a successful signing. So for the demonstration reason, we are just give it an, uh, the, 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 the ascending website.
the sign out URL indicates where your user is going to be redirected after signing out. So we are using the same for the demonstration reason. And um, we're gonna allow the OAuth flow here. The, o, the, the authorization code grant flow indicates a, a code grant flow, which provides an authorization code as the response. This code can be exchanged for access tokens with the token endpoint. Because the tokens are never exposed directly to an end user, they are less likely to become compromised. However, a custom application is required on the backend to exchange the authorization code for user pool tokens. So we are selecting two OAuth flow here and uh, allow all the OAuth scopes. Finally, save changes to fulfill different use cases. The first scenario is to allow user to sign up by themselves. Um, the hosted UI provides an OAuth 2.0 authorization server with built-in web pages that can be used to sign up and sign a user using the domain we created. We can just go to the app client setting and uh, launch the hosted UI. So this is a very intuitive and simple way to sign in and sign up user. We will now demonstrate it here. Well, the second scenario is to create a user by admin. Sometimes admin want to create users by themselves. The AWS also provides us the admin cognito user for API for creating users. We can use admin create user API. The syntax will be like this. Well, let's go to the terminal and um, try to do it. In here, we're gonna be provide the user pool ID we just created. And uh, we have assigned a username, ASC test, and give it a temporary password and uh, for three user attributes. Okay, now we can see we get a response from the Cognito API. Let's go to the user and pause and refresh it. Okay, we can see the user we just created and uh, it's in the false trains password stat status because he or, she he or she has not logged in yet. In this session, we have created AWS Cognito to create a user directory with a user pool. In addition, we also created a user by calling AWS Cognito API. Cognito is a simple and a powerful way to provide authentication and authorization and user management for web application. And we will put all the reference and the code example in the following description. If you're interested in knowing more about building web application through Lambda API Gateway Cognito, we put a few previous videos in the below description as well. See you next time. Bye. Please leave your comments, questions, critics to us so we know you are watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Ascending DC, and stay tuned for our next video. See you next week.